Hello, curl friend. Welcome back to the Frizz and Pearls channel. My name is Chloe. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of my curly tutorials and tips. Today, we are going to be talking about humidity, the dreaded, dreaded summer humidity. Over the summer, our curls take a major beating when it comes to humidity. The frizz is out of control, and I wanna teach you how to resolve it. We're gonna be talking about the ingredients you need to be looking for and watching out for what you want in your products and what you don't want in your products and some hairstyles that you can do to also help combat the frizz. Now, one quick mention, this video is sponsored by our lovely family over at Curlsmith. You guys already know that I adore them. And if you're new here, you're gonna learn that I absolutely love Curlsmith products. I've been using them for a very, very long time. And we're gonna be touching on some of the Curlsmith products that I like to use to help me with my summer curly hair routine. Now, I am gonna be talking and showing you guys about some different scarf styles that you guys can use to protect your hair during the summer months. Let's start in order of how I would normally use them and the reason why. Number one, this product did not exist last summer, but it does this summer and I'm super excited about it. This is the Bond Curl Rehab Salve. This is probably my second or third bottle to go through since it launched, I believe in January, if I remember right. And this stuff is so incredible. Reason being, especially during the summer, is because it helps with the damage, okay? It is a protein-rich bonding treatment. I adore it, especially for my high porosity, pretty damaged and bleached curls. This helps so much bring all those bonds back together and really seal them up and give it that nice amount of protein. When your curls see a lot of UV rays, that is going to cause damage. So that's why we like to combat with something like this. The next product I'm gonna do a quick call out of is the wash and scrub. This product is probably one of my biggest holy grail products and has been for a very long time, pretty much since it launched back two or three years ago. Because I do have seborrheic dermatitis, I do get really bad buildup and really bad kind of like flaky and itchiness if I don't keep a handle on it. This has been one of those key factors. And the reason this is really important during the summer is because we sweat a lot more during the summer. We also might be putting more things on our hair to combat a lot of the frizz. And so it's really important we do some really nice deep cleansing. I would recommend normally doing this at least once or twice a month. I personally like to use it every other week because it helps so much with my scalp and getting that really nice deep cleanse. So if you don't have this in your curly arsenal, really recommend you have it. Next up is your leave-in conditioner. This has been one of my favorites for years. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. This is the oil and cream. Now, keep in mind, this is pretty heavy, so less is more. But the reason I'm going to recommend this to you during the summer is because it has a rich emollient ingredient called shea butter. Emollients keep in all the beautiful hold and shine and moisture that we have, but it's gonna block that humidity from going out. Emollients are an amazing type of product that we can use during the summer especially. Now you'll also see that this is high in glycerin. So glycerin is a humectant. We can dive deeper on these on another video, but today what you need to know is glycerin equals humectant and that equals frizz. Okay, now if you have that countered with an emollient or any type of ingredient that is humidity blocking, then you're going to help counteract that and it's still gonna work really well for your curls during a humid summer day. AKA, I very, very much so recommend this if you wanna see what it looks like. It's very, very thick, okay, extremely thick, and I adore it. On the topic of emollients, this is something called the Curlsmith Intense treatment serum. This, guys, you see this, it's very thick, it's very oily. This is just a pure emollient based product. This is going to help block out humidity super, super well and add a ton of shine. So if you are finding that you are frizzing out and you wanna do a quick refresh, take a little bit of this, rub it around in your hands, it's gonna become like a really nice, rich oil in your hands, 
and you're just going to take that on your ends, okay? Take it around on your ends, and that will help bring your curls back together, and it's gonna help block out that humidity from frizzing them out and expanding your follicle to basically where if that humidity is let in and you have high porosity hair, all throughout your hair strain. It's gonna start opening up like this and letting all that humidity in and AKA causing a ton of extra frizz that maybe you don't want. Now I'm gonna list right here some of the emollient ingredients that you can look out for in your products. Those are going to help you a ton when it comes to shine and humidity resistance. Some of the ones that are in the serum here include shea butter as your first ingredient, jojoba, avocado oil, olive oil, a lot of oils you're going to find are emollient based type ingredients. Two favorite gels that are more on the stronger hold, medium hold level from Curlsmith. One being the souffle, one of my all time favorites. It is a medium hold and here's the thing, it does not have as many ingredients that go against humidity. One of the first ingredients is water, then glycerin, then babasu oil, and then you're gonna see something called polyglycerol-4. Anything that starts with that word poly, okay? That's what you're gonna wanna look out for because those are humidity blocking ingredients. This is one of the reasons why I really like this product actually, because it still lets me have really nice touchable hold, but it still does a little bit of humidity blocking. Now, if you want stronger hold, and my recommendation would be to stack these, I like to use this as my main gel, and then stack this, the In Shower Style Fixer, on my ends or just ever so slightly running it over before I dry my hair, or you can also refresh with this. This one is their stronghold. I mean strong, stronghold. This right here is also going to have polyquaternium-69. Again, I'm going to list these various poly type ingredients right here. Take a screenshot, do whatever you need to do, write them down, put them in your notes app. And that is what you're going to look out for also in your different types of ingredients for humidity blocking ingredients. What have we learned? If we wanna block out the humidity, we want ingredients like polys, and we want ingredients that are emollient rich. Those are going to help block out humidity. What we want to avoid a little bit more, but we could use a mix there of the blocking and still include glycerin or humectants, but we want to try to avoid humectants where we can, especially if they do not have any of those polys or emollient type ingredients to counteract them. I hope all that makes sense. If you have questions on this, please add them below. I'd like to do a deep dive on some of these types of ingredients and really go into kind of like the scientific portion of it on why these do what they do, but that's not the video today. We're just talking about summer and humidity and how to block it out. Now that we have the basis on what we need to be looking at for products and ingredients, let's go into some hairstyles that I personally love when it comes to scarf hairstyling during the summer. Y'all, you will see, especially if you follow me on Instagram, seriously, during the summer, my hair is up way more than it is during the winter. And a lot of times I'm using silk or satin scarves to help take out some of that humidity to protect my curls, especially when I'm on the water. Y'all, during the summer, we're in Wisconsin. I live practically on the lake. I don't actually live on the lake, but my parents do. And so I'm over there a lot of the times out in the water and I don't want to wash my hair every single time I'm near the water or the beach or the lake or where have you. So I'm gonna share some of my favorite ones that won't crease my curls as much, they won't flatten the curls so much, but they will protect them from extra wind, UV rays, and water. Now, if you are following me on Instagram, you probably saw the reel that I did earlier this month with this scarf right here, super fun. And I am gonna teach this a little bit more step-by-step -step right now on how to do this specific style. Now, unfortunately, this scarf right here, this was a freebie from Curlsmith with an Ulta purchase earlier this month. It is officially sold out. So I'm gonna show you a different scarf that you can use instead. That way you can purchase this scarf instead of being like, well, I wish I had that scarf, even though I know we all wish we had the scarf because it's super, super cute. This this is one of my favorite scarves right here. Reason being is because it is huge, okay? This thing, huge. <laughs> 
So the nice thing with this is that it's really versatile on what you can do with it. You can use it in your hair, you can put it on a bag, you can use it as a sarong over your swimsuit, like you can do all of the things because it's so large. So, and it's only 20 bucks. So I really like that. This is also a silk scarf. The reason I like silks a little bit more than satins is because they are a natural material and they breathe a lot easier than your typical satin. Satin is really just a sateen finish over basically like a plastic type material, which is why it's a lot more affordable and it's normally easier to wash. But I prefer silk because it's more breathable. It's hypoallergenic. It's a natural material. I just way more enjoy silk. So the first one we're gonna go through today is how to do this look right here, all right? You are going to fold this over into a triangle. It starts out as a square. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it over again. And then you're gonna keep folding it until you're left with basically a fold over top right here that is very thin and then you're left with a triangle on the bottom. What you're going to do is you're gonna bring that side that has been folded over, you're gonna flip it on top of your head, like so, and then we're going to tie it in the back underneath the nape of your neck. Now, you can use many sizes of scarves for this. This one right here, because it's so large, I kinda like the idea of leaving the tail underneath because I think it adds to the style, but if it is a scarf size like this, then you could actually bring it up like I did in the tutorial on Instagram. But today, we're just going to do this. You want it really nice and tight underneath. And the beauty in this style is we're going to protect our hair, especially on the top that's so susceptible to UV rays, and we're keeping it really nice and soft, protected, and it's not going to crease when we take it off in a few hours, maybe we wanna go out to dinner or something. So you tie that in a knot, and what you're gonna see on the back is you have a nice little tail that just adds a little cuteness, and the majority of your curls are really nice and protected so that when you are out at the beach or the lake or where have you, you are good to go. And then you can just take it off, slide it off, shake it out, and your curls are gonna be just fine. Now, easy style number two. This style right here is you're gonna start out doing the exact same folding that you did previously until you get it down to the size triangle that you want. But instead of starting with your hair par potentially parted, start out with it being a little bit more centered. You're gonna flip it back to the top of your head, but we're actually going to start this one over our eyebrows, okay? The reason we're starting it out on our eyebrows is so that we can pull it to where we want without our curls pushing the scarf up during the tying. We're going to tie it straight back. You can see where the tip of that triangle sits and we're actually going to fold it We're going to tie it over top of that so that we create this cute bandana type look. Now, we don't want it over our eyebrows, so we're actually going to lift that up to where we want it. I like it kind of mid forehead. Finish off with a knot. You could do a bow. You can do really whatever your heart wants. But then you also have this really cute little fringe tie. You can bring over to one shoulder and it adds like a cute little full style. It's your really cute accessory with some big earrings. This is also another really fun one. And you guys, do we see how easy these are? You can do these literally in one or two minutes. So if you want to be out on the lake, tie this onto your beach bag, and then when you're ready to start protecting your curls, if you're gonna get in the water, if you know you're seeing a lot of sun, pop this on because you can do it so easily. That's my goal. I always want an easy hairstyle. We don't wanna be like too difficult. Sometimes it's nice to do those, but on a daily basis for like regular use, this is this is what I do. Now for style three, you might be thinking, but Chloe, what if I wanna like get in the water like up by my neck and I don't want my curls to get wet because you know they're longer than my shoulder length. I'm gonna show you my go-to favorite style for this. What you need is a scrunchie and a scarf. Okay, I like a larger scrunchie if I wanna make more of like a style statement or two for my thicker hair curlies. You may wanna use something that is larger 
you know, that stretches out really well so it doesn't add any extra kink when you wanna bring it down. So for instance, I'm gonna use this one. This one's from, I think from Bread, I believe. Slip also has some amazing ones. This is one of their skinny ones, but it stretches really far, so it doesn't add much of a kink either. I'm gonna use this one though. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this, bring your hair all the way to the top of like the crown of your head. All right, we're gonna bring it up and I'm gonna bring it around once. I call this my top poof, okay? This is how I work out too. So we're gonna bring it around once and then we're gonna bring it around one more time. And then once you've brought that around, you're going to take a little bit of hair and just kind of do like a small bun in the back. What this does is it pushes all those curls to the front so you look really nice and cute in the front. And you could just leave it right there. But what I like to do, especially if I wanna make sure that we keep some extra humidity out and frizz, or if I also just don't wanna do anything to my hair and maybe it's like day five, day six curls and I'm like, I'm over this, you can just bun this, okay? And then you bring in that scarf. You're gonna start again, I always start on that diagonal triangle. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna kinda keep rolling it. We're gonna hide that corner by rolling it the other way. So then we have this, this really nice long, kinda folded up scarf. And we start at the base of the neck. And we're gonna bring it around, okay? So we've brought it around. Now, if you get something like this, don't worry about it, we'll fix it later. Make sure that these are pretty even. And then we're going to knot it. So it's gonna go around like that. And then we're gonna go back around and you can kind of figure out, you know, where do I want my scarf pieces, etc. What do I want showing? And then you tie it back around on the nape of your neck into a knot. Now, if you get pieces like this, like the edge of a scarf, what I'll do is I'll just go in there, tuck it in and then just get things placed where I want them. And then if one side is looking a little thicker than the other, you can kind of play with that too. And overall then, this is one of my also favorite. This also kind of protects your ears from the sun too if you get burned on the top of your ears. But this is protecting your curls right here, mainly around your face from sun and humidity and wind. And then the tops of your curls, remember you want something that's kind of an emollient type thing, add some shine. Normally this is my go-to when I don't want to revive my curls as much and I'm just kind of postponing a wash day. <laughs> so this is one of my favorites. You'll see this look on me all the time. And that is look number three. So now before we finish up guys, I wanna know, which was your favorite look? Number one, number two, or number three? Comment below in the description. I have linked a bunch of fun scars for you guys down in the description, so make sure to expand that. And I also have linked all those Curlsmith products that I talked to before as well. If you have any questions, please let me know. Make sure to follow up with me on Instagram. I love doing more tutorial type content that's like quicker over there for you guys. And if you haven't already, please like this video. Give it a thumbs up, it helps me so so much and I really greatly appreciate it and do not forget to subscribe if you are new. All right, I will see you guys next week. Thank you again to Curlsmith for sponsoring this video and I'll talk to you then. Bye guys.